tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Cheer up. Our home and native land. Uh, Internet, it's time once again not to pay homage to Bill Shatner, but to pay homage to some of the greatest Canadians in today's modern world. And of course, we pay homage to Bill every day in our own personal way. We have Helka Pataki esque shrines to Bill Hatner in our closets made out of bubble gum. But that being said, we're here to pay tribute to some of the greatest Canadians that ever lived, and that is the men of Epic Meal Time. (laughs) <laughs> Had to get that last one in. Uh, welcome to the Empire After Show. Uh, I am your host, the Internet Soapbox Mark. Joining me always is uh, professional wrestling's True Hobo. And I'm rocking some pretty sweet sideburns, dude. That's the closest thing to a haircut That's, you'll ever get. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. all it's all below the, the uh, hairline, really. It's still connected, though. Well, kind of. It got just a little bit of space right there. I thought, well, maybe I'll bring it in just a little. It almost looks connected. Almost. It's that long triangle. It's v- very weird. And it's of course, pretty good. We got Josh on the ones and twos. Hey! <laughs> He's Super excited, excited He's to be excited. here! We're excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about episodes 9 and 10 of Epic Meal Empire, starting with Scavenger Hunt. That little Canadian tease will have to wait for those of you who haven't seen the show. And if you haven't, what's keeping you? It's on FYI every week, every Saturday, and they marathon it as they do. It's one of those shows that's easily marathonable. <laughs> It's it's super silly and super short. It's like eating a cookie, and it's it's absolute pleasure. Bacon cookie. Bacon cookie. You can get a Joe's Cafe. We're gonna, not going to talk about food yeah. like local food. They really have, make... they have bacon cookie at Joe's Cafe. Bacon Sh- chocolate I chip. Go up to Joe's Cafe. Anyway, Granada Hill. No more local food anymore. Cause... That's still a cooking. That's a cooking relevant. It is, reference. but people can't go to Joe's Cafe. Well, whatever. It's, okay, so Scavenger Hunt is the first episode that we're going to be talking about today, and they start it with epic chicken nuggets this ain't a nugget you see a nugget this big when you go to the local food Gosh. shop no that's not a nugget let's make them giant metal tray size and they do they make a simple four pack right just a just a little four piecer <laughs> little four piecer <laughs> i think these guys are tackling one of the major problems we have in in this society is small nuggets I mean, we don't yet have a pill that exists for guys with smaller nuggets to to make their nuggets larger, so these gentlemen are just putting it together themselves. Especially since everybody's all about free range, nobody wants any chemical additives served to any of the chickens. No, we need to we need to help support the people with small nuggets. That's right. Small nuggets need need a little bit more love and, and nurturing to become big ass nuggets. Yep. And we just did a whole bit about small nuggets. We, Thank you. And we take a small bow. Small so, bow. So they, cre- they don't create because ever Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> they, they introduce ranch up, which is something that I've been doing for years. I know you really? don't get into it. Yeah. I'm not. Well, it's, it's like Russian dressing. It's basically what it is. Yeah, I think Russian's a little bit different than that. Well, I don't know. Ranch up because they're not very creative. They've got a huge <laughs> oil pot outside. So much danger. No danger whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, you can blow yourself up. It's possible to blow yourself up. These guys are not going to do that. They had just the right amount of oil to not really cause any damage to anybody. But they ran as if they were going to. A little bit of a foreshadow? Maybe. Maybe. And they discuss the phenomenon that is a drip in the house. You, you've been doing that a long time. You've had a lot of practice from even before this was on the FYI network. About four years. Yeah. Ever since ever since they did it, like they talked about it, ever since they did it for the, the, the candy barbecue where they made a giant chocolate chip cookie steak and they were just... <laughs> <laughs> it, 
You're very good. <laughs> very good. It's just the most distorted you can make your face. For all the you audio listeners, you should probably go on to YouTube, After Buzz TV, and take a look at our humble little channel to see me making terrible, terrible just, faces. Just make the ugliest face you can while you're saying it. It's really, it's, it's how you get the right sound. It's all in the face. And Natalie did not understand it. She tried. Good on her. She, she did the best she could for a first timer. She, she did all right. And she also, speaking of first timers, she uh, she pulled the f like, oh, I'm working with the guy, these guys. Finally, I could say, hey, my brother's a fan. Would you mind? I'm gonna call him. Do you mind saying something? And I was like, oh, that's that's okay. That makes sense. That's fine. But then when he was like, say say something, sauce bossy. That's when I was like, man, this is a privilege. You you can't. It's like walking up to a comedian, say something funny. It's like walking up to a wrestler, do a wrestling move. Hey, you know what? Just hey. don't. Hey, hobo, can you put me in an armbar? Yeah, I could. I'd also break it off and feed it to you, but we're not going to do that game. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's better for you this way. It's it, bizarre. But that gives him the idea, it's time for us to give back to our fans. We have such a huge, crazy, rabid following. Why don't we do something for them and involve them. So for the first time, they're not thinking of the idea first. They're going to let the fans bring them the food, and then they're going to make something for them. It's kind of a cool idea. It's really, it, this is like a, ki a Kickstarter at the absolute base level. <laughs> it's not getting money from people. It's getting ingredients from people, like the most basic things you could possibly get and need. Well, not super basic. You can't get a holiday ham all times of the year. I don't know how they got that holiday ham. I, I don't know. Whenever they shot this, who, which was, I don't know. It was sunny, so whenever. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was California, so really it could have been any time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they put the word out to Twitter. They tweet out to all of their followers, hey, if you're in the L.A. area, tweet us food and where you are, and we'll come and we'll pick it up. Seriously, I wish I could just, like, ask for pictures and get food. That's <laughs> what I want. That I mean, then that would essentially half of your work would be done you could you wouldn't have to scrounge for food anymore i could be like a real like professional wrestler if i didn't have to like just worry about eating i could just wrestle that'd be cool that would be cool not going not going the whole mick foley route sleeping on a bag of potatoes no no, no. and then eating them slowly potatoes are lumpy yeah i don't know why Some people like lumpy that. pillows who likes lumpy pillows <laughs> i guess mick foley did He's a weirdo. Enough to do him. We see the guys going all around to, to never mind. <laughs> Language is fun. Hey, um, hey, we I'm see not... the guys and Natalie going around in the ambulance. Still a great pun. Still oh, yeah. love it. Nope. Um, all people all around the the valley in Los Angeles. They went to Griffith Park and met, and they didn't even give him any sort of a name recognition. Uh, Christopher Daniels, if you're a wrestling fan. Um, they're friends with Christopher Daniels, and he brought them a ham and uh, something else that I can't remember. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, they just got a whole bunch of stuff. They got a whole bunch. They got, they got like, they got, packs of, of corn flour. I literally wrote down everything. They got corn flour, maple syrup, chorizo, cheese, chicken, olives, waffles, fries, ham, more cheese, hot dogs, refried beans, barbecue sauce, uh, salmon, sour cream, tortillas, more tortillas, burgers, bacon, whiskey, jalapenos. Yep. See, here's what I did. I didn't write that down yep. because I knew you were going to uh, write it down. I'm a details man. That's how we do it. <laughs> uh, we're a good tag team. Uh, we, we run into DC Pearson. If any of you don't know who that is, he's a, he's a writer as well as a comedian. He was a member of Derek Comedy with Donald Glover. And, um, I, and I guess they're friends too. They, they compared beards. He had better hair than Natalie, arguably. And, and it was just a whole mess of food. They... they they essentially hijacked this dude's groceries. They that was pretty great. It looked like they appeared through bushes and said, Hey man, what's in the bag? And he told them, and they're like, All right, we're going to take your groceries, and then we're going to make you a meal, and then we'll pay you back for this food. <laughs> How does that sound? He went, uh, Okay. And then, and then he, he, he kind of knew who they were, though. We make food. Do you know who we are? Yeah, you're the Epic Meal Time guys. Oh, okay, so we're going to take this. All right, so half <laughs> of the creepy stuff is done. We don't have to explain who we are. Uh, it was just bizarre. What it's like how the guy didn't care. It's no, like, he's, well, this is my food. You guys are up at mealtime, guys. You gonna take my food? So now everybody in the Southern California area should just expect that. Yes. Roving bands of Epic Mealtime stealing your groceries. Like the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody, nobody ex expects the Spanish Inquisition. The, nobody expects the Flannel Inquisition. <laughs> and market it. Shirt. Pay me for the rights. Yep. The Flannel Inquisition. You got... Chef right, stuff. And, and they're wearing hats, and they've got yes, yep, that's 
Friggin' brilliant. Nailed it. Um, in Canada, we don't steal. We just borrow. <laughs> just classic. They, they, they're, now they have everything. They're, they, have to, they have a limited time. They've got about three hours before everybody shows up. They have to decide what they're going to do. So they, they decide to make, and they were trying to make a huge plate of nachos. When you, when you look at all of the ingredients, you kind of go, I don't quite understand what's all here. But when you sort of pan back, you look... There's a lot of Mexican-ish Mexican. ingredients in here, like, sort of, so. Salmon. Except for the salmon. Sa <laughs> Waffles, hot dogs, burgers. But it was, like, mostly me Mexican food. Right. So they decide they can't make the world's big biggest plate of nachos, because that was 500 pounds? 5,000 no, pounds? No, it might have been 5,000 pounds. They decide instead to make <laughs> the world's largest nacho. So one nacho. That's that's good enough. Oh no, yeah, that's that's pretty smart. Especially, Take what you can get. Man, it was it was wild watching them make the actual nacho chip. Mm -hmm. Just be the size. I was thinking to myself, how the hell are they gonna like fry this? Just uh, wow. One of my favorite puns was, "Is the nacho an equilateral triangle or an isosceles cheese?" Yep. I love that stupid crap. Me masa is su masa. <laughs> They, <laughs> so, the, the worst slash best, because it depends on who stuff, you are. All of their stuff is fantastic. They decide to name it Nachos Maximus. That is the most badass freaking name. What man. was the other one? What was Dave's? Tyrannosaurus Max. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus Max. Like that was a good too. one, but this one is exclusively a nacho chip style name. Yeah. So, so it works a little bit better. Uh, they. They finally get to the frying of the chip, this giant triangle. And this is essentially where the, the tease early on of the deep fryer kind of pays off. They've got the huge chip chariot where they've got four, uh, they've got four dudes each on a, on, a, on a bit, and they lower it into the pit, and they run. If, and every, the whole meal is just depending on this fry to go well. Right. It's a, just, I don't know how they figured this out. I really want to know what the thought process was about, oh, we're going to use this thing to fry the giant chip, because I don't even know what that was. It sort of appeared out of nowhere. They didn't really talk about it. And that's a huge vat of oil. To heat that up would have taken forever, so there had to have been a little bit of precog in there. I mean, there multiple, uh, multiple like flame units to get it to the right temperature quickly, quickly and maintain temperature, or else it would have just been sitting in the oil. Yeah, because the rest of it, as long as you cook that while everything else is cooking, I mean, that's sort of the last thing. You cook everything else because it takes the most time. Right. And then the, the chip takes ver uh, relatively short. Adjusted, I mean, it depends on how, how thick it is. Adjusted it looks for, pretty thick. It looked about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Which, which is well, huge. Well, it's still a big chip. Yeah. Um, but we get everybody rolled in. They're starting to put everything together. You see a layer of beans. You see hot dogs, sliced ham. Waffles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, burgers. But waffles aren't inherently sweet on their own, so it's they can kind be. of like... They can Depends on be. which ones, which, what the brand is, mm -hmm. I guess. They were, they were waffle brand waffles. Right. Because you can do the chicken and waffles, you know? The waffles aren't sweet with the chicken oh, and they, waffles. Oh, and they had the roasted chicken, but it was a single, roasted, a single chicken. roasted chicken. <laughs> but what can, whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that probably didn't get used, like the salmon. But you, you can just eat salmon. Yeah. I mean, you just, you need something to eat while you're cooking. Yeah, that could have been a part of it. Could have right. been fuel. Everything else would have been used as fuel. Yeah. I mean, they used a tomahawk on the cheese. They yeah, could have used did. some of the salmon or something else. Huh? <laughs> we see the, the setup. It, it goes, they, they reveal it. It is the greatest chip that will ever be. Yes. Chip layer, waffle layer, ham, burgers, dogs, bacon, thick bacon layer, sour cream, chorizo, jollies, uh, cheese, olives, just a huge mound in the middle, and 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 but of course you need some huh, some sauce in order to <laughs> in order to finish it off. So they got a mirror, half half Ghostbuster, half food prep, who's just got like essentially a spray gun with cheese just uh, dripping. It was a sauce. it was a sa sa house there you go. spraying apparatus. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It was slow motion. Everybody had a good time, and everybody just ravenously just tearing it apart. You see... Uh, Monsters. Animals. To, uh, to be, that's what you do. I mean, whether whether you're 
preempted or not, hey, tear this meal apart or not, you see that? <laughs> Dude, if I saw that, I'll be like, ah. I want to get that part. I want to tear it off and I want to put it in my mouth. Like, like that's what you do. You see? I've had that thought many times. Not looking at a chip, though. And things got real. Everybody enjoys Sorry, I it. Sorry, blacked out there for a second. Did I miss anything? <laughs> We're, we're back on uh, talking about everybody tearing the chip Yeah, apart. yeah, just, yeah. oh, man. Ravenously. Ravenous. Viva Nachos Maximus. And the show ends with Amir spraying the camera with his souse gun. <laughs> very, very. It can't be good for the equipment. Well, I mean, they probably put a tarp over it. I hope. Yeah. They, I mean, because any, like, false sprays, even if they were just like, just aim for the screen, would have hit anything else. Just just lay up a, a tarp, and just then you can just go crazy. That's the money shot right there. Yep, beautiful cheese. And good, solid episode. Super solid. They gave yeah. back to their fans, a small smattering of their fans, but their fans well, I mean, and whatever. their friends. It worked out. I actually liked this was another one of those simple one storyline type things. It was pretty good. And then we go back to the little bit more of the complex with episode 10, TGI Fried. A. a. Classic. <laughs> so, one, I, they're too good. They're terrible, but good at oh, the yeah, same time. Yeah. Uh, they start off this episode making their candy Tex-Mex, which is another one of those ones where I I would love to like take a bite of this or that, but it would probably kill you on the inside. This, this kind of reminds me of the birthday card that I got you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the unicorn vomiting rainbows, because this is the color that would come out of you after eating this. All of this. All of the color. They uh, they made candy bacon weaves to be the, the taco shelves. Um, the the chocolate potato chips where they put like Nesquik dust in with like ruffled. That actually looked kind of good. I would do that. Just the sweet with the savory or the salty like that. That would actually. But then you get the uh, you get the whipped cream instead of the sour cream, and then the cherry topping on top yeah. of that. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Oh, boy. sounds pretty good. I mean, yeah. I just I I mean I think that's like better suited for children. Who wouldn't have some sort of horrible attack after eating it? That's the problem, is they would. They would attack everything. Well, no, yes. They would be high up on sugar. They, they would, would be an attack. They, Not, would sleep. they would receive an attack. They would sleep for a solid weekend. Yeah, what do you do after eating that? Like, is it nap time? You have that super jittery, and then crash. Yep. Then it's nap time. They even did out a little bit with, like, the, the savor. It wasn't pure... Sugar. They had they had the crepe, which uh, are, which is sweet, but it's still you know like a solid. It's not like candy, artificial stuff, and and the, arguably the potatoes and and the bacon. Like it, it probably could have given them out. They balanced out the flavor, but it doesn't change the fact that the amount of sugar is incredibly high. The whole crew was probably just jazzed for the whole day. They probably got a whole bunch of stuff done. <laughs> um, that we see Amir's crepe face. Which Great is fish. one of the scariest things that anybody could ever possibly imagine. Um, there's like, Amir, I thought we told you not to do that anymore. <laughs> He's like, wait, guys, look. It's me, Amir. Oh. Thank you. Right. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're, we feel so much better now. <laughs> uh, eating their breakfast of candy tacos and burritos. Um, the The job that Natalie gets is for... What was it? For Canadians abroad? So yes. Wanting to celebrate Canada Day? And it's, it's like... like Can a social network for Canadians in the Los Angeles area. Yeah, for, for Canadian expatriates uh, who, who want to hang out together in a nice way, maybe go bowling. So, just Laser tag. It's... it's it's not. I'm not gonna say it's bizarre. It's cause, just because everybody has different right. social groups. But sometimes you want something. If you're far away, you want something that reminds you of home, and you got a small little community there that you can get together and celebrate stuff with. Yeah, I. I it's so weird to me. Do you go to any hobo conventions? Uh, Meet any of your old friends? Sometimes, not often, because I, I have a lot of heat with them. You yeah. Know? I mean, once you get successful, you know, you get haters, you know, and I got this, so now I don't have a lot of hobo friends. And you can't, like, they'll rip that apart and sell it. They would. Yeah. It's it's rough. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Let's, talk, right. let's talk about Canada instead. Um, he meets up the organizer for this event, David, at a poutine bar. Didn't get the name. Want to get the name. We should go. It's got to be around. It's here. around. It's got to be. And they're, they're <laughs> is this your first time sharing poutine with a man? <laughs> They're they're enjoying like it looks like Canadian whiskey, Canadian beers, just a whole lot of Canadiana, as it were. And that a, I think that's a band. <laughs> yeah, 
It's a I'd, Nirvana cover band. They they never have shows because people keep going on in front of them. It's like, oh no, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> on his way, <laughs> on Arlie's way back to the studio, he gets a call from Kevin Smith, illustrious director, famed. Uh, <laughs> I was I was gonna say something bad. Tanking movie director Kevin Smith. Much respect to the man. I love him. Tusk Walrus out in theaters. Go Walrus, see yes. Go see Tusk. Um, not doing so well. A lot of people seeing the movie alone in theaters around the country. Be one of those people. Wal alone. Go see it alone. Hashtag Walrus, yes. You'll never know who... T Kevin might be in the back of the theater. Yeah. <laughs> he he'll likes... probably be heckling his own stuff. Probably. He'll be laughing, yeah. token up. Um, <laughs> questionable uh, substances. But he wishes <laughs> Harley a happy Canada Day. Wanted to be the first... Um, ever since doing Epic Mealtime the first time, they've kind of hung out. Harley Mornstein, in fact, is in Tusk. He has a small part in Tusk as a Canadian Border Patrol guy. Really? Really. Well, there you go. It all comes around. Mm -hmm. And they might, act the, act, he might be in the other two uh, True North uh, movies that Smith is making, but we don't know yet because they're still shooting. Um, those being Yoga Hoser and Moose Jaws, which is a uh, Jaws with a moose instead of a shark. Uh, <laughs> Literally. In case you couldn't figure that out. That's what they're selling. <laughs> um, but Harley invites him to the Canada Day celebration, uh, closing off with a, I love you. And it was, I hit the table like you a professional. Did. And it, it, we, we kind of get the setup of, oh, cool. Kevin Smith's going to be there. That's Why not? That's he wears it. hockey jerseys all the time. Yeah. We, we, we'll this hear, fits. We'll hear more from him uh, in, later in the show, but it's time to think of the actual meal. What are, we, what are they going to do for Canadians? What are Canadians like? Poutine. Beer. Being polite. Hockey. Hockey. Canada. More Canada. More essentially. Canada, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all just Canada. It's Whatever comes circular. to mind, it's, that's it. Very circular. Uh, they, they come up with, you know, they're going to do beaver tails. They're going to do a lot of classic Canada stuff. I didn't stuff. know what a beaver tail was until this episode. No? No. Yeah. I hadn't it, heard of it. And, and if anybody doesn't know, that's essentially a Canadian churro. It's a flat... Um, sugar fried treat with cinnamon sugar on it. So it's essentially yeah. a flat churro that looks like a beaver's tail. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Enjoy it. Make it at home. Be careful around the hot oil. <laughs> they decide to come up with the chocolate mousse, and that's not M O U S S E, that's M O O S E. That's just easy. Of course, it's a. <laughs> You did, I didn't quite understand <laughs> the grasp of, of how large this was going to be. A moose, a full moose, made out of chocolate. Yeah, it was a turtle dinosaur with antlers. They uh, have <laughs> a wonderful two-life drawing that Harley does. He's an artist, what can we say? Yes. Uh, they test Natalie by trying to get her to sing O Canada. She does not know a lick of it. Not, that, not, not even no, the tune. Do you know? Do you know any of uh, Josh, O Canada? Josh, do you know O Canada? Um, o Canada, my home and native land... Something true patronage, patronage, something command. There you go. That's all I know. It's good. Better than most Americans. Yes, better, better than, than most me, Americans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, learned that from Terrence and Philip. That's not true. <laughs> learned it from Team Canada. That's not true either. Uh, there's a little wrestling humor for you. Yep. But um, uh, they they decide they're just going to make a whole bunch of Canadiana and topping it off with this chocolate mousse. And while they're sort of just baking, I, they're, everybody's just kind of hanging out in the business area. Harley says, "Hey, there's not a lot." that we do with our brand because they're very protective of it. They want to hang on, they want to make sure that whoever they go in with, they're going to take care of the brand, it's going to be something that they want their name on. That makes sense. The Epic Mealtime brand is a big brand. Right. They're very careful with what they do because they they, they know that it's, it's important and it's special to them. So they're not willing to just sell out to anything that comes along. No, and for this, they thought, well, we, we've been using whiskey since day one, we use a lot of bacon, why don't we try to make bacon whiskey? That's that's easy. It is. And honestly, you get the there's a smoky flavor in bacon that can be found in whiskey, and it, it's just a it's a subtle crossover, in my opinion, it's very subtle, and it should be quite good if done correctly. And hopefully they do. Harley sets the call. They say a lot of businessy terms. Uh, <laughs> they ask him what he wanted to taste like, and his response, wood. Close. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. All it's right. Like, I know that there's wood. They keep it in barrels. Yeah, he so uh, obviously doesn't know much about how it's made. But something he's... gets milked? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. No, not, not, no. Corn, maybe? No. No. Corn no. milk? Corn mm. milk. 
No, no, that's not good. Uh, he ends up heading up to Seattle. They hand him four testers. One is just sort of a... One is like super whiskey-y. One is super maple-y. One is super bacon-y. And one is the mix of all four kind of harmoniously together. Harley's living a dream. He's an adult drinking with other adults as a part of a business deal, living the American dream. That is, that is as good as it gets. So how is a squared circle brew... Hobo, how's how's that? It's doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Love it. Love it living the dream every day of the week. If I can drink and get paid for it, God, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful Com- thing. Coming soon, Hobo promoted b- beer. Not really. Well, you That's know, they, they do make a, a maple bacon donut beer. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's Rogue. That's, a, that's Rogue Farms does that. And it's uh, arguably not great. But it does taste like <laughs> maple bacon donut. I really hope that uh, Harley seems like a man who knows his tastes and his flavors. As a, as a cook, I'd certainly hope so. A chef, a master chef. So I, I know this is it's really a smaller br- brewery, like whiskey manufacturer up in Seattle. I wish they had mentioned the name. I was looking for a name on it. I was trying to find the brand, which they decided the name of the actual whiskey would be Curly Tail Rye maple bacon whiskey with some wonderful bacon looking uh bottle art bottle covers and it 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 sounds too good to be true and i hope it's not just keep your eyes peeled you you gotta figure it out man takes a long time to make good whiskey Mm -hmm. and they they yeah we'll get to the end of the show but we we start getting the the prep Harley's looking for his brisket brisk kit because he's going to circumcise some fat off of this brisket. Speaking of something else that they should sell, they should just sell a bunch of tools like like chef's tools that are the brisket brisk kit. Yes. Like the joke gimmicky names? Yes. Because they do have the cooking set. Yeah, they do. They do. What do they call that? It's the Epic Mealtime cooking set. They should have a better name. The... Or else, see, or I would have known it would ex- would have it would existed if it had a better name. As it wasn't available in stores, you had to buy it from them. I, I actually do have the set. You do? I do. Why is it not here? That's a fair point. <laughs> That's a very fair point. I should, I should bring it in so we have props. Right. That would be a hell of a thing. We've got two title belts and a whole cooking set and not Jack Daniels to bring in for this show every two weeks. Well, we could... We could bring in the not Jack Daniels some more. Stay tuned. Show progress is currently in flux. Right. We're gonna change. We're gonna change the layout. Yeah. Moving forward. Vis- we're gonna vis- flip this table. Nope. We're no. not gonna flip this we're table. We're not gonna flip this table. No. Last time that happened, you almost dropped the television. Remember? Oh, yeah. Very. So close. we're not gonna flip this. We're not gonna flip the table. Flip we're gonna get back to talking them talking about <laughs> preparing the meal. All right. They've got a giant Canadian flag with which to fill. With food. Where the hell did they get that? They probably somebody probably made it. For Christ's sake, I want to know where they get the really weird gimmicks. <laughs> like, like they had the giant chip fryer. Now they have the giant friggin' flag, like cookie cutter. Where do they get this stuff? FYI's budget department. <laughs> they just pay a guy make this. Hey, we want a thing. Make it for us. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Jar- Large Beard Man. And that's what that's what they did. They they fill they filled everything t- as much as they could. They were trying to do it vertical, but everything was falling. It's tough. It's yeah. Every, you know, gravity is a son of a bitch. It's hard to do vertical poutine. Yeah. Like without like an actual like bowl to catch everything. But they did. They actually managed to work it out where they used uh, maple syrup mm-hmm. to stick it on there, and that was that was really brilliant. They were throwing the Canadian bacon, or as they call it, ham, because Americans are stupid. Uh, oh, onto, the, <laughs> onto the thing, and this is cooking, boys. This is cooking. Get on our level. J- they're, they're beyond magical. Beyond magical. Beyond magical. Yes. Yeah. the beard. Canada is a magical place. It's like the Wizard of Oz. They, uh, they get a giant moose casing, like you would put... A moose mold. Yeah, a moose mold. Uh, fill it with chocolate. Hope that everything goes well to try to try to cool it they in time to for the Canadians. Both sides of it shut like it's this. got multiple points for it's like a shot in the dark. It felt like a lot of them are going. I don't know if this is gonna work. Let's hope it works. Well, it kind of worked. Kind of. It, it made the antlers look like they're gonna be a lot bigger, but they were just kind of like they were very droopy. They should have been out and proud, and they were just sort of sad antlers. Eh. Still... I think it knew it came there to die. <laughs> 
That's that's terrible. Well, it's not a real moose. We can joke about it. Right. <laughs> uh, Kevin Smith comes out, introduces the uh, the greatest living Canadian, uh, and and about how ha- talks about how he loves being Canadian. Um, he's a huge he, he he smells like pancakes. He does. So he's the closest thing to an actual living, breathing Canadian. Uh, he introduces the greatest Canadian in the world. Jay Muse comes out. Not the greatest Canadian who ever lived. Barely boy, American. Barely American. Boys from Jersey. Harley comes out, introduces the chocolate moose, and it, it looks a little, looks a little sad. <laughs> looks a little sad. Droopy ears, droopy antlers. But then they bring out the giant Canadian flag that's just stuffed to the brim with awesome food. It's pretty, pretty wild. I'd a nickel to be a part of Canadians Abroad so that I could have been there for that Canadian celebration. Though I arguably... You could lie. I, I would mean, have, you're tall, you have a beard. Nah, that could work, eh? Um, <laughs> throw in a couple of A's there. A boat. Hose. You know, you stuff hoser. like that. Hoser. <laughs> a south. And... <laughs> um, they start off the meal as uh, every proud Canadian should with O Canada. As we heard earlier today... It, it it was actually about a half an hour ago. It wasn't today. It was it's the evening still. I don't know what day it is. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, there's no windows here. We've been in here since two weeks ago. It's really it's really weird. Right. Everything's all super connected. <laughs> tunnel system. Tun- <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just hashtag tunnel system. After Buzz Tunnel Vision. That's what the TV stands for. Huh. But <laughs> everybody is calmly and wonderfully and respectfully enjoying their Canada Day dinner. Uh, personally, they don't get it. I would have gone for the sharpshooter that they did for Canada Day, Canada Day uh, this year, which I, arguably they did the, the recordings on the same... Maybe. T- maybe. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. I can't even venture a guess. Production schedules and a lot. Um, everybody has a wonderful time. They hope that we get a guest saying, oh, I hope you weren't too much of a bother. Thanks for having us, though. <laughs> it's a wonderful evening. And, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. They didn't get it, but they're, no. they're nice. They're wonderful human beings. It's, it's just all they know how to do is be nice. Just drives us Americans crazy. And they were. They were ah. nice, but I, I love Canadians, man. Wonderful human beings because there's sometimes when you need a break from all of the crazy. They were, t- they were talking earlier in the show about what Canada is, and it's like Canada's hitting somebody with your car and then going over, shaking their hand, apologizing, and both going home without suing them <laughs> or beating them up. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's Canada. That's so weird. Have you ever heard of a Canadian standoff? <sighs> yes. A Canadian standoff is when you have two people on either side of an open door. One's inviting you in, one's inviting you out. You don't know, you don't know where to you, go. You just, no, you can no, that's, 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 I didn't just, no, I, I didn't just, oh, God. I was in one of those the other, the other day. It was pretty intense. I was sweating. <laughs> it was crazy. My bandolero was twitching. Um, don't ask what I was wearing a bandolero. But, uh... The, the show doesn't end with the meal. It ends with the guys getting the whiskey in the mail. They get a box with a couple of bottles in it. Who gets whiskey in the mail? They do. They do. And I wish we did too. Yep. Like, especially that, because we still want to try that. And, of course, because you can't drink alcohol on television, they toasted <laughs> to themselves. They brought it up to their lips, and they got the censor. They got blurred the hell out. They got blurred out while they all took a drink. That's classy. They enjoyed it. Being an adult tastes so good! <laughs> Thank you, Harley. It does. And uh, that brings our episode 10 to a close. Another solid episode from the guys at Epic Meal Empire. So happy we're getting a second season. We, we still have, I believe, six episodes left until the end of the season. Jeez, really six. 16 episodes for a first season, dude? It's a long first season. It's a good season. It's, uh, they must have really liked these guys. And as does all of America in the world. It's, it, it's playing really well. You get to watch it online. You get to watch it on TV. You get to marathon it on TV, like some of those ridiculous, like, Triple D shows. Like, th- this one actually has... Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dies oh! by Guy Fieri. Oh! I was thinking of something classier, actually. Naturally. Guy oh, Fieri. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys... Uh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> wonderful human beings, the Epic Mealtime guys, and uh, we have much more to expect from them. We've got a whole other season of Epic Meals to expect, um, but we're going to be back in two weeks to do the next two episodes. Yep. So that's, the, like, we did it two weeks ago, and we're, we're going to keep going we're just, just as a reminder. We're just going to keep doing this until, you know, something changes. And, <laughs> and we're going to keep trying to get the guys on the show. Yep. Um, we're in an open channel of communication. Make sure, if you watch the show and you want to see us interview them, go on the set and, and talk to them about 
what goes on in their brains. Make sure to tweet them the episodes. Make sure to comment on here, comment on Epic Meal we Time. We could just go to their set. That's a very good point. I didn't think of that, about that before. We could just go on their set. I don't mean I don't mean like take a camera and sneak into the set. I mean, hey, come on to the set. Oh, that's that's what you meant. Yeah, much An invitation. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sucker. Your hobo ways will not work on me this time. Whatever. You thief and a snake. Uh, so make sure to tweet at all of the Epic Mealtime guys uh, about our show and that we want to get them involved to talk to you some more because we're all about the fans here. They're all about the fans. Seems like we should get along. But really, actually, pretty damned easily. We got wrestling in common. We got alcohol in common. We got food in common. We should be the best of friends. We should. We should be buds, and that's not that's a weird endorsement. But remember, we're here every two weeks, so next week it's going to be Ruby, and then the week after that it's going to be Epic Meal Empire again. And also, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We're going to be in the comments talking. If you're listening to Always. us on iTunes, make sure to give us five stars and leave us a rating. That, that helps us out, too. Helps more pe Epic... Meal Empire fans find us. Right. Uh, that was a fun thing to say. <laughs> you, you did it so well. I'm magical. But, uh, Mr. Hobo, where can the folks find you on the interweb? They can find me on the street. And then... No, on the interweb. Oh. Everybody can find you on the street. Oh, I see. Uh, Twitter, at your hobo, pro wrestling .com, slash hobo, buy a shirt, I'm hungry, uh, hollywoodwrestling.com, I am their champ. Yes, you are. I am. You That's can also, not even refutable. You can also see us every week on Soapbox Car TV. That is our, our YouTube channel. We're actually in the uh, in the process of trying to find somebody to uh, wrestle for this championship to fight in a wrestling video game, uh, Lucha Libre, AAA Heroes Del Ring. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to find somebody to replace him, to find Hobo on Sunday. Well, maybe um, maybe Cowrie, maybe Kathy Kelly, maybe. 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 We're, we're working on it. Um, I've, been, I've been wearing the, the, the wrist thing. You've had to, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help it breathe a little. I've been wearing it way too much. It's, it gets real tight. Exactly. Of, exactly. I might, I might put it on for NXT, though. Okay. Um, but... Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Soapbox Mark. You can find all of us here on Twitter at AfterBuzz TV. Make sure to leave them comments. We will see you next time because next time we're going to eat Bill Shatner. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.